once you indulge in analysis, it's called darshana means point of view. So it does not mean philosophy. Otherwise, there would not be nine philosophies or ten philosophies. It's a point of view. The act of philosophizing our historical narrative if it is done on the basis of that power which is arbitrary. Arbitrary means past and present and analysis. Simple. You mean a manager who does that? Which in fact is a refined understanding of quote unquote being existence. Arbitrary. Where we have come from, where we will go. I can tell you about myself, I feel right in the day the moment I remember I drive, which is certain. Absolutely certain. But I am frightened. No matter how much philosophy I read, why I am frightened my wife, I won't be able to see my wife. I'm most attached to Second is my son. This is how we create a circle. I create a circle. And then lots of friends and people. And most important in this world, and I am genuinely telling you, I get emotional about the fact that I have to die. But it is a fact. And the entire narrative and discourse of the Bhagavad Gita is based on that. Why would Arjuna be quivering in his fear? When he knows Nainam Chindan Trishastani, Nainam Dhati Bhavaka, Nachainam Kedan Jabo, Na Sol Sayati Mahatma. Nothing can happen. Which is to us, to me also some bogus. How would I know? I mean, I feel that no, this beautiful world will be left behind and I'll be gone. The <coughs> idea, therefore, is that even facing the truth, and which is why I'll try and conclude uh, how, how many more minutes? Okay, it's fine then. I'm sorry then. <laughs> you have to suffer further. No, no. No, if you unleash me like this, it doesn't matter. So, so, so he, 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 he says that this being or existence of us and this understanding is possible as Bhartihari would try to remind us like, through language, through text, through speech which is called Vach, textualization you can call it, verbalization you can call it, or simple conversation. There is no other way but conversation. You can have a conversation with yourself, with the teacher, with the text. Sometimes you feel irritated by the passage that you are reading. You are talking to it, you talk to yourself. There is nothing wrong in doing that. It is important that this is inevitably attained through a process which is called commentating. If somebody has written it, then you also want to write it, you have to comment it out. Otherwise, it will be plagiarism. Simply copying it. So, this commentary, meaning an understanding through elaborate method of scrutiny of a particular thing, which is a material. Uh, 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 a, a, an art, uh, archaeological uh, artifact or an inscription or a text. We need to analyze it in the context. This would also mean enlisting the help of memory to draw knowledge from our past. E. H. Gomrich, I don't know how many of you have heard this. None of you have heard this? Yes. Okay. Yes, Gombrich, I always say the best historian of art that the world has ever produced so far. Not that you know, I, I, I knew him well because his son was one of my students. So, so, so the idea is that he, what he says, he, and, and read his books, story of art at least. If nothing else, I think each college should, uh, and each teacher should give his book, which was published in 2001, 2005. Called a little history. It doesn't talk about India and it's very irritated. But he wrote it when he was only 24 in German. And he didn't allow anybody to translate it because he wanted to translate it in English himself, although this book was translated already in 10 different European languages. And he published it just with, uh, completed the translation just before he died. 
in 2000, compared to the transition in 1999, and the book was then published in 2001. A little history of the world see how beautiful it is. 200 or 80, not very big. That's as well it is. He says in another context, within the life of the mind, life of the mind, I regard the humanities as representing the mind. Our culture. Humanitas is the verb. Humanitas meant to the ancient world roughly anything that distinguished man from beast. That's the ancient definition. And so the notion became identified with what we call civilized man. Since nobody doubted that these values had first been realized and established by classical culture, it was the memory of this culture which the humanity were expected to keep alive. Alas, they do not. This is what I So, therefore, a subject like history is so important. I always say you can't write history of an hour later. And therefore, we are at the greater advantage of having a material to analyze. We can't guess and we can't predict. So the analysis has to be on what there is before you. So if there is, a, there is this culture of civilization which has come to us through memory of generations, it's a different matter. <coughs> Something massive happened in the Second World War in the 1950s and 60s. A huge, huge discipline was created which is called memory, otherwise known as Holocaust memory. And most of the departments of the Western University now have at least a major chunk in the department of history or even memory. Now, of course, it has its own problems as we face often in, in historical narrative. But nevertheless, he said, the tradition of Indian system, I say, promoting knowledge and preserving memory remains, in my opinion, unparalleled. It is called Sutra. Sutra is a collective knowledge generation. It's a zip file. You need to have a code word to open it or a teacher to open it. Sutra is something that we have. It's a code word, but it's a coded knowledge. Coded knowledge, it is not a closed knowledge. It's just that you need to learn the discipline to understand it, either from the teacher or from the community. And which is why I said in the beginning, Janmadhyasya Jataha is the fourth sutra of Vedanta Sutra. Why Adhato Brahma Jigyasa is the first one, one of the five Mahavakyas. Adhato Brahma Jigyasa, let us be curious about the truth. That's the beginning of it. And then the Janmadhyasya Jataha. Because Janma, etc is dependent upon our thinking. Why is history not literature, I always wonder? Despite the fact that you have a Nobel Prize on history, you know who? Churchill wrote two volumes of history, or three one, two volumes. In, initially two volumes. Yes. No, this is the history of Europe. History of world. Ah, history of world. And it was listed as a literature and he got a Nobel Prize. In literature, because there is no Nobel Prize. And, and there are hardcore historians say, let us stop history. I have never been able to understand. But also because I am not a historian. You are still God for history. Yeah, exactly. So, so you, you, and you opened up the whole idea of, of, of recognizing a piece of writing, which is writing about people. Also about. Let us give you an example. I would be surprised if uh, the writer of uh, uh, the, 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 what is uh, what is the intersection? The, 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 the revolutionary writer of um, the, the great. I am not going to apologize while talking on memory that I am getting old. Forgetting. <laughs> I normally rely on my memory. But uh, Harry Potter. Yeah. No, I am saying that. I won't be surprised if Ronald Fleming gets Nobel Prize one day. Because it's a literature and it has revolutionized the ideas. How you can imagine, how you can think. In any case, let me not just get distracted any further. So, Sutra, and quickly I will run through, therefore, there are six types of interpretations which 
कैपिटल गंदे काम टीका उप टीका भाष्य वार्तिक महाभाष्य इट कीप्स द ऑडियंस इन माइंड एंड देयर फॉर अ वार्तिक इज समथिंग व्हिच इज इन द पैराफ्रेज यू नो इट महाभाष्य इज फॉर एवरीबॉडी यू कैन एंटर इट एंड एंड सिमिलरली एंड टीका एंड टीका इज अ वेरी कॉमन वर्ड व्हिच इज टीका टिप्पणी इज कॉमन टीका इज इट एंड टिप्पणी इज आल्सो वेरी शॉर्ट किस सो एंड द डेफिनेशन ऑफ सूत्र इज सूत्रार्थो वर्णते यत्र पदैः सूत्रानुसारे अ सूत्र कैन बी एक्सप्लेन्ड ओनली बाय हैंगिंग ऑन टू द सिलेबस ऑफ द सूत्र दैट्स व्हाई कॉल इट जिप बाय सो यू हैव टू हैंग ऑन टू द सिलेबस एंड ईच सिलेबस माइट रिक्वायर अ लॉट ऑफ इंटरप्रिटेशन स्वपदानि च वर्णते भाष्य एंड द कमेंट्री देयरफॉर व्हाटएवर इट सब्स्टिट्यूट विद दिस वर्ड्स the commentary on those words becomes bhashya so whenever you you say first give a, a literal meaning that you will understand then you start explaining each syllable and word perhaps depending on how many words a particular sutra has normally sutra should be a very short one so this verbalize this is also part of what i call i'm skipping some uh, sections of this thing and come back to the conversation otherwise it will be boring i don't like boring this audience but i you know manage all the time to do that uh, see see you see what happens is that she arvindo when he talks about this thing what does he see he says writing of the past is discovering of the dharma now he comes with a fantastic and almost very you know bludgeoning kind of sentence <coughs> if you understand dharma is a religion then it's then the problem this is writing history is discovery of dharma which began from the period of ashoka and continued to the arrival of the british this is arvind arvind goes on to say and i quote again that scholarship as yet only deals with a fraction of what is still lying extant and what is extant is only a small percentage of what is still lying so he said it is the only the commentary which will eke out the past and each historian has to be a commentator on dharma dharma simply means the nature of that particular text never a need chervendo makes a difference between writing and writing down Now, where does he draw this inspiration from? Plato in the fourth century made a remark. It is a melancholy that people have begun to write Homer down. Why? Until the time of Plato, there was a Nobel Prize kind of a, a, a recognition in Athens, where every year the person who could best recite without any flaw, without any fault, Homer will be recognized as the reciter god yet he said that was the power of memory and now because at that time people have begun to write down so there is a difference between writing and writing down as i always say the, the moment we read it we also write it without writing we cannot simply read it because our mind is never an idle one the word reflection is You reflect on it. You counter it when it once it hits your your brains. So he says there is no historical parallel for such an intellectual labor and activity before the invention of printing and the facilities of modern science. Yet all that mass of research and production and curiosity of details was accomplished without these facilities and with no better record. Than the bell. This is all been born now. The Renaissance stage now. There is another unique quality of India's intellectual tradition that is verbalization of knowledge, debates, and textual. It is writing our history in the form of telling stories. The terms are 
floating with all of us. Tatha, Taha, Tahini, Tahani, etc. To me, Katha is a history. It tells of something, provided it is written with certain rules that have been given to us as historical records. Whether it is the story of Rama, Krishna, or the stories of the Mahabharata, or even the exposition of highly refined philosophical texts, all of them involve telling and teaching. Asking questions to seek answers, and that, I'm going back again, Satyam Paramitiva, to seek the truth. What actually happened? during the rule of this world of person. That's the truth you are looking for. Whether you go through litigation, whether you go through debates, whether you go through the archival material. And I will end, I will you know, torture you any further, you know, I have reached page 5 and that is good enough for me, um, is, is that this, this conversation is something which is extremely important, is that the Ramayana and the Mahabharata as we consider the oldest records of India's cultural, economic, and social. I even call any Vedic ritual as a, an activity which involves economy, social, and culture. You need material to perform Vedic rituals, depending on how much you know, even a reception or a wedding. It is a different matter that most people don't go to the Pandal and Pandit and they are simply busy with chatting and dancing or eating that sort of thing. But everything involves, how many people are in, you know, in, involved in producing and practicing the religion? How much employment does it generate? So when you are performing a ritual, all the things will be required for that, even for Samidha, Mata, Ghee. And then we have in India these animal melas. Animals are sold and bought, things are sold and bought. The melas happen even in Delhi as advanced a city as they do. We the villagers of course look forward to the Amelas around our village and everybody saved or looked forward to that animal. Imagine this is, this is what we told so, you. So to consider a Vedic system as a as, as psychological and ritual religious is completely a bogus idea. Whether one likes it or not, this is how I consider it. You cannot perform it. It is a societal ritual. And, and People are agonizing over, you know, organizing even a mutter at home. You know, Bhash, the, the, Patanjali, the, the commentator of, of, of Panini, you know what he says? Why should you learn to read and write correctly? I won't go into the 12 reasons that he gives, right in the beginning, right in the introduction. He says, one of the reasons, of course, there are one reason that you can preserve the knowledge, the other is that when you go outside, you are respected, then you can go about the world and, and people will you can communicate. He says, if nothing, for nothing else, study, learn to verbalize and have a conversation to be able to name your child. Can you imagine? One of the 12 reasons that he gives of learning a language and knowledge is to be able to name your child. So much discussion takes place. It's a different matter that some dada or nana will decide this is what that person is called. But this is a wonderful activity that goes on in these days, WhatsApp messages, suggest some things. Even social media suggests some things. I have got gifted with a child. And a lot of names are suggested. Most of the time you might get help. So the idea is when he says, even to be able to name a child, if that were alone the objective, you must have knowledge of God. So here, the, the, the stories of the Mahabharata and the Ramayana are nothing different than telling about our past, whether it is an imaginary past or a real past, that debate I don't want to get into because I'm too attached to these things. Sage Valmiki opens his magnum opus by asking questions. That's how it opens. Oh Hanta, why have you killed only one of the two birds? It opens with this. And therefore I assume nobody should respect you. A person who 
person who is doesn't have the knowledge of differentiation is not respected as Valimiki said. A poor chap, you know, he took a bath and did his rituals and walking up and up and down, maybe taking a morning walk on the banks of Tamasa and he sees something, something is triggered in him. And he asks a question of what? Normally you say house wife, I ask a question of student, doesn't know anything. Let me go and ask a principal. He's asking a question, a hunter whose job it is to earn bread and butter by hunting. He made no mistake. But still Valimiki would have him to have a basic differentiation. Why did he kill only one of the And this question and his disciples suddenly said, Guruji, what have you said? I have never heard these, these lines. And Valimiki shivers, he's frightened. When the knowledge comes, you have to carry it's a very heavy I told you, Yana Pantha Kripana Kaihara. It's very difficult to carry. And suddenly, Narad jumps in. Calls his father Brahma also. He said, What do I do? I have got this great wisdom of learning of language to be able to narrate the story. Brahma says, Now become a beautiful subject. This is what you do your place this evening. Why have you chosen this topic? Pick up a beautiful subject in which, on which to write in this beautiful line. And if you say, tell me, he tells, it's a great king, prince. And then he said, if you do that, Guru Rama Katham Punyam, verse 8, chapter 2 of the Balakan. Guru Rama Katham Punyam, Shloka Vatham Maruva. Write this story, people will read it. He said, I promise you, O Valmiki Sage, great sage, that you have become Yavat Hasinti Gireha Sarita Shamahitare, Tavat Drama and As long as the rivers and the mountains shall endure upon this earth so long, will the story of Rama be told to people. Can you fault Brahma for that? Even, even, even those who say, throw this book in the Bay of Bengal or mutilated, they can't get away from the narrative. Just as the great Vasavanna cannot get away from the structure of the temple, he says, we don't need temples, the rich will make temples for Shiva. What will I, a poor man, do? My legs are pillars, the body is the shine, my head is the cupola of gold. Listen, O Lord of the meeting rivers, things standing shall fall, moving ever shall stay. This is the translation by Ramanujan of Vasavanna's Vachana. He says, and I wrote in one of the articles, that Vasavanna dismissed the temple architecture, but, the, but he could not dismiss the, it is the, the metaphorical structure that is required. Garbha Griha, Stambha, Kalasha. Why would he say, my legs are pillars, the body is a shine, my head is a cupola of gold. The idea therefore is that you need a structure, whether you like it or not. So therefore, Brahma has to tell him there is a structure, there's a story, narrate it, and if you do it successfully, I promise you, Yavat Sasyan Tigiraya, Sarita Shtamahi Kale, Yavat Rama and Kalpa, Loki, Shati. I wanted to conclude by saying, how do we draw memory? What happens that we remember and we can't figure it out? In other words, the knowledge is saturated in you, Lying silent in you, you have to read Kalidas. Ramyani Vichya Madhuran Shadi Shakta Shabdan Paryutsuki Bhavati Yatsuki Topi Jantu Tacheta Sasvarati Guruna Mahoda Purum Havas Kiran Janana He said sometimes by encountering a particular scene, hearing a particular song, watching a particular movie, something triggers in you and you cannot isolate it, you cannot capture it. Because Bhavasthirani, Janananatara Saurirani, because our emotions, our knowledge, travel from generation to generation. This he is talking about, he is about to meet Shakuntala. He is feeling uneasy. Shakuntala is standing right in front of him and he is feeling, feeling uneasy. He said, Ramya Ani Viksha Madhura Ani When you see it's beautiful, see here beautiful words, beautiful songs, beautiful pictures. And I can't figure out anything because he has already rejected it. 
and then when she goes away, suddenly, you know, the next verse is beautiful. It says, Yatha Gajo Niti Samakharupi. Just as the elephant has walked past before me, Yatha Gajo Niti Samakharupi. Tasmin Apakramati Samshaya Asyat. Pada Nidrishtva Hibhavet Pratiti Hi. Tatha Vidhomi Manasuri Kara. He laments. Just like an elephant walks past before me, I refuse to acknowledge it. But later on, I go and look at the put marks of the elephant, and I say, yes, there was an elephant which walked past. He is lamenting after Shakuntala has left. I do believe that we need, therefore, to be sensitive to writing. It's a, it's a, it's a long conversation. Sorry, I have stopped it at halfway through. I know you can you you would say go on and on and on. I will go on. That's not a problem. <laughs> but but somewhere it must end, and I I I am going to repeat one story, just the very last one. Why a history is important in Kaha and Kaha? An 18th century or late 17th century, 18th century poem. Some of you might have heard Sri Krishna Karna. Yashoda, my Yashoda is trying to put her baby Krishna to sleep. And this is the poet. The poet has no idea about history. I am trying to extract and stretch it beyond that because I like this. He says, how does he say? Normally a parent, mostly the mothers when they want to put their baby to sleep, whenever it is time for them to sleep. What is the word that is called? Dalaba. Ugly word. They are all mostly stories. Lalaba is simply means the child doesn't understand that. You tell real stories. I read Harry Potter to my son when he was small. And then I was poor. I said, I will never read it. I, you know, he said, read it out. You read it nicely. I, I like telling it. Even at this age, he says, it's nonsense. I don't have time. No. So the whole idea that you want to read it out. There is an art in narration. My Ashoda has to tell the story like all mothers do. Ramo Nama Babu. There was a prince called Rama. Ramo Nama Babu. Whom the story must be responded to, acknowledged. Once you start twiddling on your phone, I know it is boring. So Ramo Nama Babu. Whom Baby Krishna is saying, you know, lying blissfully in his mother's lap and saying, whom. You know, children, when you fall asleep, sometimes they wake you up. No, no, no. Wake up and tell the story. Sometimes the reverse happens. It has happened with me. This is what I am saying. Ramo Nama Babu Ahum Tadabala, his wife, Sita. Hum Taupitu. Repeatedly in between, Humkar is coming and therefore Yashoda is continuing with the story. Because the moment Humkar is over, the mother knows, the father knows, he's gone to sleep, she's gone to sleep. You are happy. Krishna is Humka, indulging Ramo Nama Babu Humta Dabala Sita Eti Humta Upitur Vacha Panchavati Vate Tate Dipti Harada. They then went to the forest following the instructions of Rama's father and lived there. And there Ravana abducts him. It's a shortened version. One verse history of Rama. Vacha Panchavati Vate Viharata Tam Ahara Dravana. Ravana suddenly, by this time, Umkara has stopped, he has dozed off and gone into a sleep. Baby Krishna. But his auditory perception is active. The last part of the verse is Saumitre Kwadhanur Dhanur Dhanuriti. Oh Lakshmana, where is my bow? Where is my bow? Where is my bow? He suddenly remembers his past, his earlier avatar of Rama. In his dream, if this, this Krishna Karnamrata simply said that he started telling me I was Ram, you and I would laugh. Because he is in Sushupti Avastha, in his sleep, half asleep, and remembers his past, he said, Saumitre Kvadhanur Dhanur Dhanuriti. And this poet says, May this anxious sound, sound of Devi Krishna, Dukkha. Thank you so much.